If you like what you see here, then feel free to subscribe for future content. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, so I just posted a video about a gripe that I have against certain members of the Brony Analysis League. Despite that, however, there are critics in this fandom that I not only love, but highly respect. I figure if I'm going to even out my sense of morality, I also have to talk about critics for this show that I see in a positive light. And, seeing as how I began with one of the worst, I'm gonna continue with one of the best. The mysterious Mr. Enter became a fan of MLP in the same way that many of us did. He just heard about how surprisingly good it was, despite that it was, well, MLP. It wasn't until he heard about the backlash given to the Magical Mystery Cure, that he decided to start going over each and every episode on his own. He does this by analyzing the episode piece by piece from beginning to end. He starts by giving the episode 5 points, and depending on what he likes and dislikes about the episode, is the result of him either adding a point or deducting a point. By the end of the episode, he gives it a final score with the maximum being 10 points, quickly summing up the episode with a small recap. But it's not just MLP that he does. He's also made a name for himself with his side series known as Admirable Animation, where he reviews some of the best cartoon episodes in general, and Animated Atrocities, where he reviews the worst of animation. Specifically, Modern Spongebob and Family Guy. What I do like best about him is that he is very, very smart. Whenever he talks about something, whether it be good or bad, he goes into so much detail about why he feels this way towards what he's analyzing. It's actually so interesting that you want to hear what he says next. Maybe it'll be uplifting, maybe it'll be life-changing, hell, it may even be funny. I also like him for being able to balance his optimism with his critical thoughts. He's willing to not look at something with a critical mindset the first time he sees it, and just allows himself to enjoy it before he has to inevitably critique it. At least, if there's anything to like. He has his negative moments, of course, but when those negative moments do happen, you can see where he's coming from. Because again, he explains exactly why this particular moment in the episode rubbed him the wrong way, and he does it in a way that's identifiable. I think my absolute favorite video of his was his review of the Magical Mystery Cure, and this was some time after Season 3. You know, when the Brony fandom's drama really started to come into full swing. The seasonal rot, the flanderized characters, the alicorn transformation, all the I think the show has become horrible and have lost interest in it fucking bullshit. Many have taken their shots at reviewing the episode already, but this was the review that I believe set everything straight. Everyone was talking about how much of a mess and a jumping the shark moment that Twilight turning into an alicorn was, or how there were too many songs, but the mysterious Mr. Enter takes a deeper look at what's actually there. And this is what makes him a good reviewer. He doesn't let the songs get in the way of the episode's score based on how many there are, but instead he acknowledges how good they are at furthering the story. He talks about how far Twilight has come since she moved to Ponyville, and he talks about how we should all feel proud of how she's come such a long way, and how she's grown, and what she has done to prove herself as a noble leader. He talks about everything she has done up to this point in the series to allow her to find more confidence in herself as an individual. Where everyone else over-exaggerated what they believe was wrong with the episode, he talks about everything that's right with it. And he continues to do this in Season 4, even after half of the fandom left over the stupidest things. There are moments when he does come across an episode he doesn't like, but it's actually not that common. Episodes he reviewed negatively became less and less as the show progressed, and that is exactly what we want to see. We want to see someone who praises the show. Not blindly, mind you, but stating why it's deserving of the praise that it's received, or should be receiving. Even going so far as to defend it against those who needlessly harp on it. He even defended the Equestria Girls after everyone was going apeshit over it. There is never a moment in the Mysterious Mr. Enter's reviews where he criticizes something based on a biased gut reaction. He looks at it thoroughly and carefully, even watching it more than once or twice before putting out the review. I also like that about him because that is what a critic should do. They can't just watch something one time and decide to rate it based on their first time seeing it. They have to look at it multiple times to see if there was something they missed, or if they end up changing their mind on something. And if there was something that they missed, whether it makes their review more positive or more negative, they need to include that additional thought into the final analysis. He doesn't leave anything out, and he's sure to talk about it as much as possible. 
If I did have a problem with the mysterious Mr. Enter, it would be that there are those times when he lets his judgment get the better of him, and he does become too cynical. While he does have a lot of knowledge on proper analysis, I admit that there are times when he does deduct points unfairly. Like when he said nitpicking was annoying and tedious despite all the times that he did it himself? That's a little hypocritical, isn't it? Actually, my least favorite review of his was Mystery on the Friendship Express. I admit that the episode wasn't perfect, but it felt like his criticisms towards the episode felt very misinformed. Especially the idea that Pinkie Pie was badly portrayed. Sure, she did act too silly and jump to conclusions a lot, but it's been established that one of Diane's defining character traits is how she removes herself from reality. She's always been the most childish and unpredictable of the main characters, so it makes sense that she would act like this. There's also a few other things in the episode I felt like he got wrong, but I don't think it's worth harping on him over. Speaking of Pinkie Pie, I'll openly admit that his participation in the Season 4 drama was another problem that I've had with him recently. I don't just mean Philly Vanilli, I mean the coloring book, the bell ringing, admiring a piece of paper, and being easily distracted by a balloon. He describes them as over-exaggerating her playful childish side, but was it really all that bad? Are those really any different from the times that she treated the disappearance of Celestia and reappearance of an evil villain like a guessing game? Admiring her reflection on a trophy? Being easily distracted by a piece of candy on the ground? Even banging her head against something isn't anything new, since we've seen her do that in the past. You might say it was a different situation, but come on, she could have just as easily used her hoof. As for Philly Vanilli, yeah, I admit that this episode did not make the best use of her flaws, but even then, I have seen much, much worse. Pinky's childish tendencies were merely more noticeable in Season 4. It doesn't mean that her character was flanderized. But for Enter to go on these huge rants about how he was worried about her, even going so far as to outright compare her to Patrick Starr, that was just really pushing it. This is the same guy who defended the mysterious Merduel and the magical mystery cure, two of the most controversial episodes in the show. He even defends Daring Don't, It Ain't Easy Being Breezies, and the Equestria games, all of which had some kind of drama surrounding them. Considering all the great qualities that I've said about him up to this point, I don't think it makes a lot of sense that the mysterious Mr. Enter would suddenly harp on Pinkie Pie like this. But then again, the mysterious Mr. Enter wasn't the only one who harped on Pinkie Pie that season, so it wouldn't be right to treat him like he's the only one with this flaw. He's still a great reviewer, and he's a person that this fandom needs. For every asshole who complains about how the show has gotten worse, the mysterious Mr. Enter is there to talk about how it's gotten better. For every dick who selfishly criticizes the magical mystery cure and Twilight's kingdom, he's there to talk about why the episodes work. Even his team-up with Dr. Wolf about the fandom's negativity is by far one of his absolute best moments, because he's talking with someone who has just as much optimistic feelings towards the show as he does. We understand his frustration and we can identify with it because we feel the same level of frustration. We've grown so tired of people who focus solely on what they don't like to the point that they completely miss the point of an episode or what makes it good. And as long as he's around, it actually makes me feel hope for a fandom that, in a way, is slowly dying. I'm willing to understand a critic's outlook on a given work, as long as they don't over-exaggerate criticisms and nitpick to the most annoying degree possible, I'll continue to watch analysis videos like the ones that the mysterious Mr. Enter makes. Even if it's not an episode of MLP that he's reviewing, I still want to know what he's going to say in his admirable animations or animated atrocities, because he knows what he's doing, and he knows how to explain it. The mysterious Mr. Enter fascinates me in all the right ways because I know I will never be this kind of person. I will never be this smart, and I will never leave the impact that he has left on the fandom. I may be good at reviewing the show and I might get some recognition for it in the future, but I know that the mysterious Mr. Enter is unmatched compared to me because he is the one who does nearly everything right in every way it can possibly be done right. Whether he actually comes across this tribute himself or not, I just wanted to talk about why I think he's an inspiration to all loyal fans of the show, myself included. Though that doesn't mean I let him cloud my judgment on an episode either. I admit that I like Dragon Quest despite that he and Voice of Reason have made it out to be one of the show's worst episodes. But still, his hopefulness towards the show and his non-biased outlook on it is what truly makes him one of my favorites. His brilliance is nearly unmatched, and his hopes for the show's future are just as bright as mine. A hope that I hope will continue to strengthen as time goes by.
I'm asking is to stop being the Snark Knight. If I ever do that, you'll have my permission to pummel me with a stick in the street. Fuck it, you know what? It's worth it if it means keeping myself in check.